for a show to be good, is it always necessary to have a complex plot and a deep cast of characters? Can masterful visual and sound production elevate an average story to a great one? I believe Kimetsu no Yaiba proves that it can. I feel like there are only two types of opinions about Kimetsu no Yaiba. Either you love it as one of the best anime of the decade, or you hate it as an overly hyped story with little to back it up. So now after the movie that absolutely broke the box offices in Japan and with the widely anticipated release of the second season, I finally want to share my honest thoughts on this highly controversial anime. Hi, my name is Manu, I'm getting really tired of all the Demon Slayer merch here in Japan. Seriously, every convenience store has some chocolate or beverage with something from the series on it. But nonetheless, I want to convince you today that it's absolutely worth watching Kimetsu no Yaiba with a heavy emphasis on the watching part. Before we can get into the part of this show that I absolutely love and that ultimately made me recommend this show, I want to address some criticism that I have. This anime undoubtedly set new standards in some aspects, but is quite underwhelming in others, which I feel is what led to the polarized opinions around it. The biggest criticism you hear around the story is its writing, but that's such a general criticism that it physically pains me whenever someone says it. Writing as a whole consists of so many parts. The world, the premise, the plot, the characters, the dialogue, and much, much more. That being said, I promised that I would start with some honest negative feedback. One of my favorite things in storytelling are great characters. People who are relatable or detestable or inspiring, any of these, but generally feel like real people who go on some sort of journey throughout the story. And I honestly gotta say that Demon Slayer does not have great character writing. Tanjiro is an interesting take on the shonen hero trope, one of the better characters in the story overall and definitely not as terrible as many people claim. But I also have to admit that he doesn't impact me on a personal level as a Luffy or an Itadori would and in a way is almost a little bit too good? Does that make sense? Where well, there are very few morally questionable actions from his side that make him feel more like a real person. <laughs> Now, almost all of the characters have a distinctive quirk that makes them unique, but at the same time lack proper characterization. Zeitsu is probably the most annoying aspect of the entire show for me, because even with his backstory, we don't really get a good impression as for why he behaves this way, and honestly, the joke with his character as an over-the-top coward drags on way too long, I think. <laughs> And at least up to now, there is literally no redeeming aspect to his character. Similarly, Inosuke's quirk is also a bit too much, however, compared to Zenitsu, he has a lot more character development in this regard early on. And another aspect that bothered me was that many of the antagonists get flashbacks to make them more relatable, however, with very, very poor timing, only after they already have been defeated, which sort of misses the point of making us sympathize with them. Nezuko, who is the star of the show in many ways, is extremely lovable, yes, but doesn't have a single line of proper dialogue throughout the series, even though demons can talk and we have other examples of good demons not eating humans. So why does Nezuko wear that muzzle all the time? <laughs> And in general, there are a number of inconsistencies like this throughout the story. At some points, I found the pacing of the plot very poorly chosen, where some fights drag on too long, while important character moments are cut short or overshadowed by badly timed comedy. Demon Slayer is not perfect, and I think criticizing certain aspects of the show is absolutely justified. And it's a shame, really, because the story could be so, so much more with better character writing. However, now with all that being said, 
why do I still love and strongly recommend that you watch this anime? Well, first of all, next to character and pace, there is a lot of really decent writing in this as well. I think the premise of the story is pretty decent as we follow Tanjiro's quest to find a cure for his demon sister where we follow him growing up and learning about the world around him. It's a classic shonen arc but very well executed I think. <laughs> There is a great balance and great variety of characters with a very refreshing take on the female roles, not following the big boob damsel in distress pattern, but actually introducing a very unique and impressive cast of male and female characters alike. And on top of that, the anime also doesn't shy away from graphic imagery and a darker subtone, the two things that also made Jujutsu Kaisen stand out so much to me. Now Tanjiro's motivation is clear from the start and we can fully understand why he does what he does. This allows us to explore the world of this anime with him, which is the first thing about Kimetsu no Yaiba where I personally think it fully outshines many of its competitors. The setting and story world of this anime are absolutely fantastic. I am a huge fan of world building and Edo period Japan was the perfect choice for this in my opinion. This way we get the best of both worlds, rural, medieval looking Japan as well as bright, vivid cities. Times are changing and we see tradition and katana meeting electricity and progress. We see the demons funnily enough integrating into this new world way better than the Demon Slayer organization and all the challenges that come with a changing country. <laughs> But for me most importantly, we get this beautiful aesthetic of Edo period Japan that offers the most romanticized image that all of us have of Japan and that so many of us love. The landscapes are beautiful, the towns and cities are stunning with detail and despite the constant threat of the demons, there is a certain sense of peace and stability to this world. Do you know that warm feeling you associate with wonderfully drawn anime landscapes? Well, Demon Slayer is that for every single episode. It's a fantastic, if admittedly romanticized, glimpse into a version of Japan that you just don't see all too often in anime, that Japanese people are incredibly proud of, which partly I think explains the crazy success it had domestically. However, this already gets me to the core of this video. For me, this world only truly comes to life like this in the anime. The main reason this story became such a hit and was able to distinguish itself from its competition was in large part thanks to studio Ufotable. Ufotable? I have no idea how to pronounce this actually. The studio who brought this world to life. I really can't praise them enough because that's how big their contribution has been. You can pause the anime at almost any point and it looks like a f***ing wallpaper. The world feels vibrant and alive, the character designs are colorful and unique and combined with fantastic voice acting as well as detail rich facial expressions that together make up for a lot of the characterization missing in the manga. <laughs> The production team managed to find a near flawless balance between 2D and 3D, seamlessly blending the two to allow for new and exciting camera moments and action sequences, as well as stunning ambient lighting, perfecting what many other anime struggle with. In my opinion, visually, Demon Slayer easily outperforms most competition of the last few years. It's truly a visual masterpiece. The score created by Yuki Katsuura and Go Shina is pretty much perfect, with a rich variety of tracks that by themselves lift the plot and storyline to a higher level. <laughs> Thank you. 
The openings by the artist Lisa are so popular here in Japan that you basically hear them every day somewhere playing on some radio station. All of that accentuated by great sound design that complements the score perfectly. Interestingly enough, Demon Slayer not only won Anime of the Year at the Crunchyroll Awards, we can talk about how legit those are, but they also won Best Fight Scene. And I think that this is the real reason this anime is as successful as it is. The outstanding work of the visual and sound department came to full fruition with the many action and fighting scenes that this anime has. Every time that Tanjiro swings to unleash his water breathing, it is followed by a visual firework of these beautiful, lush, blue ink-like waves juxtaposed against a photorealistic background. This is just breathtaking every single time I see it. And even slow motion, which is often used a bit awkwardly in Japanese media, is perfect. I mean, just, just look at this scene. This is some real eye candy right there. While the writing in the manga is far from impeccable and in some parts is a little disappointing, the concept of the story overall is solid. And taken to the screen with breathtaking work from the production team, Kimetsu no Yaiba in my opinion is a must see, though you can skip the scenes with Zenitsu in my opinion. It is so incredibly bingeable and now that season 2 is out with the Pleasure District arc, I can't wait to dive back into this Edo period wonder world and hunt some demons. If you made it until here, that's the universe telling you to subscribe. Welcome aboard. <laughs> no, but seriously, thanks for subscribing.